um, that you and in certain times boils and leprosy was used at times of judgment because of disobedience and sin. So here, Job appeared to people that he had sinned. So not only was his health attacked, his wealth attacked, his family attacked, but his character was also attacked. And sometimes we can handle God taking certain things from us, but when he when he he allows things to come to us, attack our integrity and our character, that really hurts, especially when you know you're doing the will of God. And Job refused to curse God. He chose to bless God at all times. And the scripture goes on to say his wife, she, it seemed like she had become bitter. It seemed like the trials and tribulations seemed to get to her and they were affecting her. So she went to Job and she said in the uh, second chapter 9 and 10 verse, then his wife says to him, do you still hold fast that you are blameless and upright? Do you still hold to that you haven't sinned? That's what she asked him. She said, renounce God and die. This is the Amplified version. Which she meant curse God and die. And she knew there was power in his words. But he said to her, you speak as a foolish woman would speak. He was like, no, that's foolish talk. I can't entertain that. What? He said, shall we accept the good of the hand of God and not accept misfortune? Or what is of a bad nature? Basically, basically he's saying, do we accept all the good that God has given us, but we don't accept adversity? Which conflicts with the scripture. The scripture says, he that suffered with me shall reign with me. And in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So no matter who was trying to influence Job, he chose to bless the Lord. No matter how negative the environment was around him, he chose to bless and praise the name of the Lord. So God is encouraging us no matter who is surrounding you, whether it be love, one, family, or friend, bless the Lord. Keep them out of your circle if you can. If you can't, get away from it. Don't entertain it. The scripture says in Luke 6 and 45, it says, A good man out of good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. So Job couldn't speak negative because the abundance of his heart was good. God wants us to be mindful of what we're letting in our hearts. And that we're making sure that we are letting an abundance of good seed in our hearts. Because if abundance of good is there, no matter what is going on, your mouth will not speak only the abundance. That's all it will speak. So there's an abundance of evil in it. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to speak but then if there's a bond of good, no matter what the trial, the test, the tribulation is, you're going to choose God. You're going to choose the blessing. You're going to choose the new good. You're going to choose the same good. 2 Timothy 2, 16 and 17. But shun profane and vain battle, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. I'm going to say that again. But shun profane and vain battling, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and they will eat as both the canker. And, and so, just to make it more simplified, the amplified version says, "But avoid all empty talk, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their teachings will eat away like cancer and spread like anger." And God dealt with me. I didn't, I was like, Lord, what you have me to teach today? And immediately my Bible opened to Job, and I said, is that what you want me to teach? I'm just going to pray, and I prayed a little while, and then my Bible went straight to these 
scriptures. Second Timothy. And I was like, oh God. And it was in alignment with speaking and blessing God. And I was like, okay, Lord. And that, so he was letting us know in 2 Timothy 2, 16 and 17, that even empty talk, just talking about nothing, just, just gossiping, you know, it, it, it seemed harmless. Well, people at that church get on my nerves. God is letting me know and letting us know that that Like a cancer. Then it will destroy. Cancer destroys. So God was, it was letting me know I want to encourage my people to be careful what they're saying. If they're choosing to bless me, that's not how you bless me. That's not how you bless me. It's ungodly. Even if you've been hurt. I, I think um, Jessica Reed put out a song. Oh, better and not bitter. Some of us have become bitter and not better. And we don't know that we're producing ungodliness not only in our lives, we're affecting others' lives. We have to continue to dis demonstrate, distribute positiveness, godliness in our own lives and others. Joe was our ultimate example. Even though others were talking about him, challenging his faith, telling him that he had lived that upright and godly life that people thought. You know, that hurts. And you want to challenge people, you want to defend yourself, or you want to get back at people, but Joe did not do that. He kept talking positive. There were moments, if you were read on in Job, that Job was discouraged. But he would not curse God with his lips. There will be moments in your life like Job when it seems dark. When it seems dim. When it seems like the Lord has forsaken you. When it seems like things are not going to get better. But you gotta keep trusting the Lord. Isaiah 50 and 10. Who is among you who fears the Lord, who obeys the voice of his servant, yet who walks in darkness and deep trouble and has no shining splendor in his heart? You, you lost hope. Let him rely on, trust in, and be confident in the name of the Lord. And let him lean upon him and be supported by God. The scripture says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall suffering, affliction, tribulation, distress, calamity, persecution, peril, or sword. You can't let anything separate you from the love of God. You can't even give up if it seems dark. If it seems like no one is with you. Know that God is with you and he says in his word, he will never leave you. He will never leave you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He will never forsake you. He will never forsake you. He will never forsake you. So no matter what it looks like, you're not forsaken. You're not forgotten. You will be blessed. You will